when Nadab and Abihu, sons of Aaron, offered up strange fire, profane fire, not in line with God's prescribed way. They did things out of line. God killed them on the spot. Because when it comes to worship, and when it comes to approaching God, when it comes to the Holy of Holies, there's only one way. There is no back door, as it were, or side entrance. There is a straightforward frontal entrance, and you can only enter in by means of purification and anointing and consecration. You and I today, if we really want to get closer to Jehovah and His Son Christ, and if we really want to hear and know what God is saying to the churches, then we must be consecrated and prepared for this activity. Fulfillment of the word. Adam was the, the first representation of body that ultimately Jesus was to fill. He was ultimately, Adam was a beginning of an ultimate be the holy of holies in that temple, in that body that God had formed from the dust of the earth. Think of it, Jesus became one with the earth in the body, was to become a servant, a bond slave, a human made of the dust of the earth. But God in the human of the dust, God breathing into that dust, made it a living being, a living soul, never to die until sin came. But there was only one remedy of sin, and that was for another to come who were who was to bring that holiness, that purity that was originally for Adam before sin, that was there, the perfect harmony and communion between God and Adam, what was forfeited and what was eternally lost when Adam and Eve disobeyed God was, was and is fulfilled in Christ coming into that same body, a living, holy God who was to be pure in every way, who was to not do this and to do this just as Adam was to do, and who was to tend to the earth, who was to tend to creation. So Jesus has said, Verily, verily, the hour has come that I must be glorified. And unless a grain of wheat woven into the created order is the fact that unless seed goes into dirt, there's no plant that bears bunches and bunches of more seed. Unless you and I go into the ground, die to ourselves, turn our members that are wickedness and, and, and selfishness and worldly lust, and turn those members over to be slaughtered, over to be killed. That is what is happening in the new birth. We are turning our sinful members and passions and lusts over to Christ. We're yielding up our members, as it says in Romans chapter 6. And we are dying to sin once and for all at the moment of the new birth. And Jesus says, unless a seed goes into the ground, he can not bear fruit unless you die to yourself and give up on being your own boss you will never live the dirt is representative of a place of laying a dead body underneath enclosed encapsulated put to rest that is where the old man is to be. He is to be put to rest, buried, and there he is to stay. And the new man, through the livingness of the Spirit, comes to life in us, and we live life in the Spirit, fulfilling the law of Christ by the animating power of Christ now working within us, enabling us to constantly slay the flesh. So what we're saying here is as we start to discuss what it really means to worship God, the only way we can worship God is to die to self before we even come into the sanctuary so that we can be vessels of honor, so that we can be like um, those candlesticks or those bowls of incense 
that sweet smelling savor to God. There must be a love and devotion to Christ and a turning over of your life to Christ, which is that beautiful offering that the Lord is looking for, that he's looking to bless with a smile and a heavenly blessing. This is what the desire of our Father is, but it is founded and it established in the cross work, in the atonement of Jesus Christ, which is a perfect fulfillment of everything that was set forth in Moses. Do not ignore the Old Testament order. Study it thoroughly because Jesus came to fulfill it in his actual human life. Every detail of how he laid his life down ties to the tabernacle service and worship of the Ark and Testimony, going into the Holy of Holies, going to Abraham and Isaac, and the offering up of Isaac on Mount Moriah, and how Abraham was to do that. Everything connects. Everything is woven together. It is amazing. That's why when we get into these doctrinal disputes, it usually comes about by not knowing enough about the amazingness of our redemption. Ignorance will create dispute. Paul said, if I don't do these things, I will forfeit my soul. I want to save myself and my hearers. Paul never, he said, compete to win the prize, to win the race, to fight effectively. Yet it still says that those for whom Christ died, he will not lose a one of them because his sacrifice is so beautiful and so perfect and his prayers are so powerful that they cannot be denied. His word is God's word, Father word, and Father word has to be established on the earth. So if the Father's word is not established, then Jesus is not the Son of God. So whatever Jesus says and whatever Jesus sought to accomplish all the way through from John 12 into John 17 will be accomplished. And it is modeling beautifully the original tabernacle worship that was set forth in the book of Exodus. He says, he who loves his life loses it. If you want to live and be happy, die to yourself, die to your opinions, die to your way, die to being your own boss. He who hates his life in this world will keep it to everlasting life or life eternal. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. There is no other way to serve Christ but to literally follow a moving Christ who has got the assignment to gather his bride and prepare his bride for one great day Coming together in perfect marital bliss. So Jesus is moving and he's saying, if you will serve me, you will follow me. That is not a sitting activity. There are moments when you sit and wait for Jesus to say, now take a rest, sit, hold ground, but then he moves and then he moves some more. This is why Paul moves so much is that he was always being directed by the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ in harmony, working together to spread the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the one and only once delivered gospel message that now we carry the stewardship to carry today. This is a very sober thing that we carry the same message that Paul carried and we must carry it in the same manner. We cannot let it become less than what it was originally given to be. This is a serious message and it must be treated with seriousness and sobriety. It must be meditated on, it must be prayed over, it must be uh, int intricately understood because it's like studying a beautiful Rembrandt painting. You're gonna study it if you love it a lot and you're gonna keep looking at it and looking at it and notice the, the movement of the, of the artist as he made this color and, and made this shape and, and created this contrast. You're gonna study it just like that with adoration. He says that you will follow me and where I am there shall my servant also be. Right here in Pile of Mountain, if I am truly following Christ and through this dying process that I've been going through, if I am submitted to Christ and if I am serving him the way he wants, he's right here with me. And that holds true for you as well. If you know for certainty that you are dying and more so dying to yourself and giving your life away, be assured that Christ is right there with you. Be comforted by that truth. And if anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Praise God. Praise God.